Welcome to this week's edition of Word from Jerusalem. Today has come to the turn of Arise, the young adults chapter of the International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem to host the show. And today we're going to talk about the challenges faced by young Christian young adults around the world. And it's important to remember that 52% of the world's population are under the age of 30. And in certain countries in Africa and the Middle East, 70% of the population are under the age of 30. It is therefore very important for Christian leaders around the world to lift up those young adults around the world, the future leaders of the church. And next we're going to go over and listen to a devotion by the Arise Youth Director, Yanis Salukangas, who's going to talk on the topic, Young Plants in the Garden and the importance of being rooted in the Word of God. Today we will be touching and speaking uh, especially in regards to the young people and uh, what is happening in the church and in the world with the young people today. I think today's uh, world and, and the church is facing uh, some challenges regarding the young people. I think there's a lot of information, uh, we have the internet, uh, we have social media and it's constant. There's, there's, a, there's a volcano eruption every single day of information. And I think the young people are a bit confused a bit um, regarding the information. It's not the lack of information, but I think it's the vast amount of information and the young people don't really know and discern what is the right information, what to believe and what not to believe. So actually I would like to start with John 1 and 1. And John 1 and 1 says uh, a good statement. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it doesn't matter really what's my opinion or maybe what's your opinion. The only thing that really matters in the end is what the Word of God says. Because all the answers to all the questions and challenges, we can find it from the Bible. And the Bible says that uh, my life is planted in a garden. You know, in Matthew 13, we can read that we are the good seeds in the garden. That means that you and me, we are in a garden. Now in the garden, there's a lot of different type of plants. We have uh, tall plants, we have short plants, uh, all kind of different colors, different flowers. And I believe that there's a big diversity in the garden of different type of plants. That's you and me, we are the plants in that garden. And in that garden, we also have to remember that in Matthew 13, it mentions about the weeds, that the garden is not only full of good plants you also have weeds and the weeds you need to take care you need to take them out of the garden and for how long has this garden been alive for how long has it been created in genesis 8 we can read that uh, until the ends of the earth and until the earth remains it's seed time and a harvest so we are to plant seeds in this garden until the day this earth doesn't exist actually anymore. So it's a long time. So you and me, we're constantly in this garden. You like it or not. So we are his plants. Now I want to focus on a specific type of plants. And these are the young plants in the garden. The young plants in the garden are, they are different. They're, they're not just like the rest. Why? is because there are two very specific things about these plants. One is that they're young. It means that they are very fragile. They are not as strong as the other ones. But also they are very fast to grow. They're eager to grow actually. They, they've been set to grow. The young plants, they're set to grow. They're not set to stagnate. They're set to grow. Now, the Bible says that we are in the garden. We are to take care of the garden. That means that you and me, we should be taking care of the garden too. Now, I have my garden also. I have uh, my family. I have my two daughters. I have my wife. These are plants also in my garden and I need to guard them. My children are the young plants. The young plants need a specific care. I need to invest time 
to take care of these plants. Let's think of it this way. If I need to irrigate, I need to pull water and put water on these plants, it requires time. If I don't put time to irrigate these plants, I cannot irrigate them. I cannot really take care of them. Now, that means that I need to invest time into taking care of these plants. The same way we need to take care and we need to invest time into the young plants of our church, into the young people of the church. We need to put time and listen to them. When my father took me to fishing, I remember, I remember those days very clearly. He planted a seed of love in my heart. When my mom baked with me, she planted a seed of love also in my heart. But also my youth pastor, when he told me good advices, he took time aside to speak with me. He also planted a seed, a spiritual seed, just like my mom and my, my father. He also planted a seed in my life. And those have been the seeds that I am now harvesting in my life, now when I'm older. Now, I believe that you and me, we are called to take care and plant seeds of love, of faithfulness to the young plants in the garden. That means that we need to take time and we need to do actions, not just speaking, but also actions. Why? It's because if the plant doesn't grow, the roots also don't grow. If you're rootless, you will never have a fruit. That is a very interesting uh, thought that if you don't have roots, you can never bear a fruit. And actually the Bible speaks a lot about Israel and in Romans 11 specifically about the branches and that were rooted and were, were, were grafted actually in the tree. Now we are grafted and we are put into this tree, into this holy tree which has very deep roots. Now we as Gentiles, we are grafted into this tree which is bearing a fruit. Now God is faithful. He never forgets his plants. He really takes care of, this, of his plants. But you and me, we need to take care of our brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter which country, what language, what culture, we're all in the same garden. We all have our responsibility. Now, I think that there are two challenges facing today's uh, young adults world and the youth world is one is the, the sense of rootlessness. They, they feel that they have no roots. And as a result of that, I believe that that sense of uh, not having roots, it causes them to, to the seed to be on a shifting foundation. It means that the foundation is shifting all the time. It means that the, the building or the plant can collapse at any point. That is a very good way to put it, that we need to have firm roots, just like the olive tree. The olive tree has very strong and roots that go very deep into the ground. Also, the Bible is the best tool, is the best instruction manual on how to take care of these young uh, plants and how to irrigate them and how to really uh, take care of them in a way that they someday they will give us a very, very big, fruitful harvest. And now uh, I would like you to show you a very interesting interview with one of our uh, good friends, is Pastor uh, Stephen Corey from Bethlehem, and we do a lot of things together with uh, with my friend Stephen. And one of the things is that what we want to do is we want to reach out to all the young people, Jews. Arabs, Christians, everyone in the land of Israel. And with Arise, that is one of the things that we want to focus. And I want you, I want you to uh, listen carefully on what we are doing with Stephen Corey and what we just did with him. Today we're speaking about how to reach to our neighbors, how to uh, love our neighbors. In Galatians 5 it says, we should love our neighbors just like we love ourselves. And Israel is full of uh, neighboring countries. Uh, uh, Jerusalem as, as a city is neighboring a lot of uh, neighbor cities. And today I have a special guest with me, a very good friend of mine, uh, Stephen Khoury. How are you, Stephen? Hi, Yanni. It's good to see you again, my nice friend. To see you, God man. bless you, man. The Bible says that uh, faith without deeds is dead. And uh, we were partnering with you guys, with Holy Land's missions, 
and we did something very special with you guys. Uh, we did a football camp for the Arab and Christian kids in, in Bethlehem. What do you feel about that and what was the result of that? It was an awesome experience where we got uh, 50, 50 plus kids. We, 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 we wrapped up the number to a specific number because we didn't want it to be just a, a, an event. We wanted it to be a relationship and, and we felt that to keeping it in a small number, we can develop that relationship. They learn skills on the field and they also learn skills off the field by spending time one on one with people. They learn skills off, off the field by teaching them how to be, how to share, how to care, how to give to others. And at the end of the two day soccer field, we passed out some uh, uniforms, some uh, medallions and, um, and a trophy, four big trophies for four unique individuals of four different distinct characters and, and, and skills. And uh, Marcos Tavares, he was the one that uh, the ICAGA brought in co-partnership with us. And uh, Marcos Tavares is a born-again believer soccer player um, who plays in Slovenia. He gave his gospel message of his salvation, how he came to Christ, and how his best friend, at the end of his story, the best friend uh, was Jesus Christ. And that was his basic story about his best friend. Um, saved him from being today in jail or even dead from from drugs or what be it. Um, and at the end, uh, the Muslim parents were there. Uh, they were very, very happy with it. Right after the, the second day when kids went home, uh, we took you, you Yanni, and, and some of the ICHA people with Marcos, the soccer player, to our church in Bethlehem. And three Muslim kids hopped in the car with us and they went with us to church. It was just an amazing experience. And, and those three kids, those Muslim kids, came to our one week summer church camp. So we have two Muslim kids today from large Muslim families that said, can we come to church, which is a big, big deal. So now you're going to see me hopping in, hop in the car with me and you'll see that. So this is an amazing opportunity. This was all about is going to where they are and getting them shown on the love of Jesus. So we're going to take them to church, which is awesome. So. Today was a time where history was made to bring Muslim kids, Christian kids, Palestinian kids together. Bethlehem is a neighboring city uh, to Jerusalem and, and Galatians 5 says that we should love our neighbor. Uh, what can we do as, as Christians in the West? Maybe for us uh, it's many times very hard to understand, uh, you know, living in the middle of conflicts. What does it really mean? We just read it from the papers. But in, in this land it's, it's, it's real. So what can we do as, uh, as Christians to bring hope to the people in, in Bethlehem. Um, let, let me answer them. One is we are challenging every believer, every Christian, every person that's in, involved and in, interested in religious issues and social issues and, and human issues is to first to pray. To pray for, for God's uh, anointing, for God's peace, for God's hand to continue to be upon this land, Israel, both the Jews and the Arabs. The second thing we always are asking people to do is to uh, prayerfully consider coming to Israel. Um, there's conferences that ICEJ does. Um, there are conferences that our ministry does as well. So we're always encouraging Christians consider coming to Israel on a missions trip. Uh, people can visit our website for that. It's holylandmissions.org, www.holylandmissions.org. Um, and this, uh, and, and they can come visit the land, visit both uh, ministries like yours, a ministry like, uh, like ours who are on the Arab side. Mm -hmm. The third thing that Christians uh, in America or in the Europe, in the world can do today uh, is they can become a part of our ministry, whether it be by uh, coming to visit, whether it be a, a, a support, you know, resource supporters, whether it be to adopt a project, adopt a ministry, adopt a family. Um, we are, our ministry right now is the fastest growing ministry and the largest uh, Arab ministry in the land, mostly in the Arab Palestinian uh, uh, communities, meaning amongst Arab Muslims and amongst Arab uh, uh, Christians. And we're expanding, we're growing because we're going to where they are. Mm. Now that takes time, it takes, it's dangerous, it takes efforts, it takes resources, but we're doing it because we have to get the gospel out. We got to get that message of hope and love to them. Uh, and again, I thank God for the ICEJ, but, it's, but we need uh, 1,000 ICEJs out there. Um, because there isn't 1,000 ICEJs uh, out there that are so unique, but there are unique individuals that can be a part of what we're doing. And that's what we're challenging Christians to know that there is hope right now. So thank you very much, Stephen, for coming today with us. Keep praying for us, keep praying for our ministry, and bless the Christian Arabs in the land. They need your prayers, and they need you to bless them. So keep connecting with us, we will keep connecting with you, and God bless you from Israel.
So Emmanuel, we are now at the Christian Embassy Garden and we've been speaking about the young plants in the garden that we need to be rooted and there needs to be people uh, to take care of the young plants. And this one uh, passage in the Bible in uh, Colossians 2 and 7, which uh, says that we need to be rooted and built up in Him. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the place where Paul is speaking that we need to be rooted uh, in Jesus and uh, He will build us up. It means that we need to know the Word of God, we need to know the meaning of the Kingdom, uh, so as young people we could be uh, built up in Him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, the young people are facing a lot of challenges today. In the church, uh, uh, the society is bringing a lot of pressure. So what do you think, uh, what are some of the things that, uh, the challenges that, that the young people are facing in your opinion? It's true, I mean, young people today, they're going through a very tough time and especially young Christian believers. And I would say, uh, just look in the media, for example. Media is a big root cause to the challenges. In the media, they're exposed to sex, they're exposed to drug and alcohol, they're exposed to secular music, and you name it. Yeah. So it's really tough today. It's, uh, it's uh, pressures from all angles coming at you all the time. You know? So in your opinion, uh, the young people, they're, they're pressured and they, they cannot find really answers on how to cope with those things? No, it is tough, it's tough, because you know, it's, it's also the group pressure, you know. My friend is here, my friend want to take me to that place, I'm not allowed to go there for my mom or for my parents, but still I go, I go there, I find out, wow, this was cool, you know. You get, they get a taste for that thing, and they're coming further and further and further away from the church. Yeah. The same thing happened with me when I was 18. I grew up in a Christian home, Sunday school boy, singing in the choir, playing instrument in the church, age of 18, move away from home. I got exposed to all those uh, new, new challenges which I couldn't cope with and I drifted away from the Lord and I was probably gone for 10 years. Mm. So it's, it's, it's really tough and I don't know, I, what about you Jana, what do you think could be done in order to help uh, people like myself when I was young and young Christians out there in the world today? Well in my opinion, uh, of course every, all of these things they start from home, from, from the parents, from mom and dad, Foundation. you know, the foundations are set there. But of course the, the church has a responsibility and the Bible is very clear about it that uh, the leaders are, uh, uh, you know, they had to build uh, the, the people, be, you know, coming after them and, uh, you know, edifying the new generation. So I think, um, in my opinion, one, there they should be more time. There should be more time for the young adults. There should be more time for questions. Mm. Uh, they should listen maybe a bit more. Um, it doesn't mean that you always have an answer to all their questions, mm, no, but you know, just to be listened, I think that that would make a big difference. Mm. And of course, uh, teaching the Bible. Exactly. You know, I think they, there's a lot of errors which uh, the, the, the church in general is maybe, I don't know if, if the right word is afraid, but they are, you know, they're deviating and they're, you know, they're going around it. And I think one of them is Israel, actually. Uh, Israel is, is a hot topic. A lot of young people are very confused about this. They don't see Israel in the Bible the way we should. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they just see it as a political, uh, you know, uh, a political thing. Mm, exactly. So uh, I think teaching the Word of God, teaching the Word of God just the way it is, I'm not saying that it's always easy, but we should definitely emphasize more in the teaching of the Word of God mm. uh, among the, the youth and the young adults. Uh, so they can implement, so they can grow and, and, and you know, be built up in, yeah, into the kingdom. Right. And uh, that today as well, because if you look around the church today, you look around the world today, like I said in the beginning, the majority actually of the population on this earth are under the age of 30. Mm. But what is done by the church leaders? What are the programs to raise up the youth? Mm. What are the programs to empower them and so on? It's a lot of talk, but it's not that much action. Mm. So that is something actually that, that, that we as Christian leaders in a ministry must, uh, we must jump on that train yeah. and do something in order to help that majority of Christians out there in the world. Yeah, yeah. and definitely it's, uh, you have no, if the plant doesn't have no roots, mm -hmm. it will never bear no fruits. Mm. And uh, so what are we doing with the rice? You know, we are, we're doing a lot of things. So why, what are we doing with the rice to, to help and uh, lift up the young generation? Exactly, a rice, um, we're having a lot of different products in the rice. One of them, for example, is the Arise Now magazine, which is a quarterly magazine, comes out four times a year. Really good reading. We cover Israel, we cover the region, we cover even the Christian world. In the last issue, for example, we interviewed a young Christian man from Congo, Brazzaville, from the Republic of Congo. We've been interviewing people from Thailand about how it is to be Christian in Thailand and so on and so forth. So the Arise Now magazine is one of the products that we have. You can find, uh, if you want to read that one, you can go to our website. You can also go on Facebook and you can find it there. Another product that we have is uh, a weekly radio podcast 
called A Rise Bay Show. Really good uh, podcast as well. It's featuring uh, devotions, discussions, interviews, sometimes music and so on and so forth. So once a week you're able to listen to this one. And uh, of course we have the Arise Summer Tour. We all know about the Summer Tour. And the Arise Summer Tour, it's uh, normally held during the month of July. And it's a 10 day tour around the land of Israel, filled with biblical sites, filled with historical sites, devotions, worship, and a lot of fun. And people who come to this tour, I can assure you that they return as a new person, as a new human being. So I really, that is something that we need to encourage the young people out there in the world to come to mm. the Rice Summit Tour, which will be held the next one in 2015. So please connect with the Arise uh, Ministries at the ICEJ. You can find all the necessary information from our website. It's www.arisegeneration.org. And I challenge you and encourage you to pray for the young generation of today so they could be built up and rooted into God and be a part of this awesome kingdom where you and me are at the moment. So they need your advices and they need your wisdom, which God has given into your life. And now we will go and uh, look at a few great moments from the Arise Summer Tour 2014. A tour that was unbelievable. God changed young people's hearts, minds and lives for the rest of their lives. So I want to bless you from Jerusalem and let's go and see what we did at the Summer Tour 2014. <laughs> I'm reading a very interesting article here. <laughs> indescribable it it's almost blissful it takes my breath away totally and completely I feel like I'm in heaven to say the least In 1980, the Israeli parliament passed a law declaring a united Jerusalem as the eternal capital of the state of Israel. Threatened by the Arab League with an oil embargo, national embassies in Jerusalem closed their doors and moved to Tel Aviv. That same year, Christians from around the world gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Sensing the isolation of the Israeli people, the participants and leaders of this gathering decided to establish the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. It's always important for us to remember that the Christian Embassy was actually established out of the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is something which marvels me until today to think that for now more than 30 years, Christians are coming from all over the world to celebrate with us a Jewish festival, Sukkot. Um, Ray, what is your experience with that? Just for me personally, it's such an amazing expression of unity of the body of Christ to see so many Christians from so many different backgrounds, from so many different uh, faith origins, uh, and they come to Jerusalem and everything is kind of put aside with just this heart and intent to, to number one, worship the Lord, but then also to, to want to be a blessing to this nation and an encouragement to this nation. I think it's a great opportunity for, for people to come and it's a, it's a great season for people to come and, and visit Israel. You are, you are traveling all over the world. You know what it means to see churches all over the world supporting Israel. Yeah, we, we, we not only have a mandate here in Israel, but we also have it in the nations. Yes. And uh, in the nations, we serve the local body of Christ with our message. Jesus at the center, his character of covenant keeping God highlighted in his dealings with Israel. And the Lord has been uh, good to us. We've been able to touch the whole nations. We raise the, the global prayer on behalf of Israel, and uh, we are acting uh, as a bridge between the Gentile nations and Israel. 
And we do all this because we know that whoever blesses Israel shall be blessed. Actually, to bless Israel, practically, there's much more than just coming here as a visitor to this land. Uh, Nicole, what can people do in order to help Israel very practically? Well, since Israel was established as a nation, you know that they've been very successful in a great many areas. However, there's still a lot of challenges that Israel faces today in the area of social needs. And it gives us a, an opportunity as Christians to reach out in a practical expression of love and support for this people and to say to Israel that she's not alone. Uh, we have the privilege and the opportunity to work with every sector of Israeli society, whether that's uh, the Jewish, secular, Orthodox, um, Arabs, Druze, Bedouin, everyone in the whole society, we have the opportunity to work in every sector. I like uh, what uh, 1 Corinthians 13 says, the love chapter, how it describes love as patient and kind. It also says that love rejoices in the truth. As Christians, we want to be out there and uh, we carry out uh, our media publications uh, initiative through uh, many uh, mediums. Uh, we have a daily news service where uh, reports go out by email. We also post it on our, our website, www.icej.org. And we have a weekly radio program, Front Page Jerusalem, heard on about 100 Christian, uh, Christian radio stations across North America, also around the world. We have uh, weekly TV spots now on Daystar. Uh, we're uh, going to be working with God TV on a weekly program called Word from Jerusalem. And our monthly magazine is all call, also called Word from Jerusalem, which it, uh, it gives you updates about our events, our activities, also current affairs, analysis, I think most important Bible teachings about Israel. And I think when you get to the core of it, we want to speak biblical truth to the church, to the nations about Israel. You just had the privilege to meet our leadership team here in Jerusalem and to be part of one of our strategic meetings which take place every single week here. Uh, here we, we strategize, we plan, we think about how we can bless Israel at the best. And I want to invite you personally today to partner with the International Christian Embassy here in Jerusalem. We are your embassy. We want to be there for you in order to convey your blessings and to convey your love to the Jewish people. Please stand with us, please pray for us, and prayerfully consider to support us financially. Thank you so much, and may the Lord bless you here out of Zion.